This time on the show, home voiceover IP setups using free switch. Christian Fernandez of Custard joins us, then Jolly Cloud OS. Is it cloudy and jolly? Plus bash watch scripts, remapping caps lock from the terminal, and Jason Applebaum on Carrier IQ. Hide your kids, hide your wife, all that and mo. this time on Hack5. This segment of Hack5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome oh, to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen. Is this is your weekly dose technolust. So. Shannon's going to stop speaking now. But it's Christmas. No. Almost. Okay. Happy holidays. Holiday. Yay. It's it's holiday. Right? They don't let you say Christmas anymore. Yeah, they do. They we do? can say Christmas on the show. Okay. Apt, get, install, Christmas. Yay! Welcome to Hack 5, your weekly dose of Technoless. I am Shannon Morse. That's Darren I'm Kitchen. Darren Kitchen. <laughs> Couldn't find package Christmas. Uh-oh. Uh, man. Holidays? Holiday? Hanukkah? Try Kwanzaa. Try, what is it the called? Kwanzaa Kanaka Christmas? Ha Hanukkah. Oh. Hana Kwanzaa. It's, I don't have the package. Chris Mahana Kwanzaa. Ramen. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let's get right into it then. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Oh, well, I guess in the holiday spirit. What is this? That is a gift from a fan. Woohoo! Then we get to play the game. What's in the box? Um, we really don't know what these are anymore. But thank you for sending them to 548 <laughs> Market Street because we love checking out. What could it be? Ah, so homework. Oh, dude. Hippie duck. Aww. Paul, you got to get oh, the hippie perfect duck. perfect for San Francisco. <laughs> it's a hippie duck. Yay, let's you know go to what? Berkeley. If I brought this to Berkeley, it would fit in. Yes. Oh, my gosh. So what is this? What dude, do we Dude, this have? is actually really cool. This is a Haynes technical manual. If you're, uh, if you're not familiar with Haynes, they did all the modem codes in the 90s and the 80s and all that stuff. Oh, yay. This is for me. Oh, Great show, guys. Dude. I thought Snubs could use a girly ducky for her USB. For Darren, more Hayes flashbacks. And do you remember the Kermit transfer protocol? The project at Columbia University just got canceled in July. A 30-year-old application. I wonder how many hacks went through that code over the years. From Jim. No joke. This, this is museum worthy. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah, I totally remember using the Kermit I protocol. I don't know what that is. It, it was a really slow way to transfer files, unlike oh. Z modem and X modem. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. just saying. ATDT 757215425. Woohoo! DDB. Sorry. Oh, I remember that noise. Yeah. I used to have to, like, I, I would get on the internet really, really late at night and I would have to cover the modem really? with my pillow because I didn't know how to turn it off. I was so young, I had no clue. See, See I that? wish I knew that when I was younger. Let's, let's find it would have saved me from getting in trouble so many times. Let's find the ATL0 And command. all I was doing was building websites on GeoCities. I don't know why my dad was so upset. Uh -huh. And maybe downloading stuff from Napster. Legal files. Yay, of course. Of course. Of course, yes. Napster, good stuff. Wow, this is freaking, this is sweet. V38, I think I just saw right before I closed it. Oh, God. I know what he's going to be doing, like, all the rest of the day. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that's totally You know cool. what we also love? We love it when you guys send us in the little tools and utilities and tweaks and technologies that you guys have been working on, and PC Freak did just such thing. Yes, PC Freak wrote, I found out that in corporate networks, Windows gets very slow if you have Windows shortcuts .lnk files pointing to no longer reachable UNC pass, which often often happens, since users like it to create shortcuts to nearly anything. Everything. They're going to shortcut everything. everything on their desktop. So the specific problem that pointed me to the above was trying to add pictures to an Outlook contact. I had to wait about 60 seconds until I got the file open dialog from Windows. This happens only once. After that, it worked fine. The next day, the same problem. First try, took again 60 seconds to open the dialog. As I found out, Windows, especially Windows XP, always tries to enumerate LNK files and check if the target is still there. This causes the delay. And to be able to fix this problem in the future without manually searching for LNK files pointing to non-existent UNC pass, I created a small utility called rtsvunc.exe. It was created using the auto IT scripting language. The source code is included and you can get it at my blog on this article. And we'll link that in the show notes. And I'm just so, so the tool, what it does is it goes ahead and it looks for um, for UNC file for UNC paths in link files, and then it generates output like in a little log file, and all you have to do is rename it to like a CMD oh, and run so it, and it will nicer. delete them all. <laughs> or Finally. 
maybe you can, anyway. I mean, I always ran into this problem with like people that would create shortcuts to like shared directories that were only accessible from our oh, VPN. Yeah. Yeah. And then when they're not connected to the VPN, the open dialog and Windows XP being, a, being what Windows yeah, XP it is. Yeah, it is Windows XP. Yeah, so thanks for sending that along because hopefully somebody else is out there that has that annoying user <coughs> that always calls them with the stupid computer <laughs> problems and the thing not working and the, I don't know, wait a minute. And it's like, can we just run Linux or something? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to get out. I'm just going to calm down now. But, but thank you for sending that in, PC Freak, because we love little utilities like that. And auto IT, auto IT scripting stuff is uh, something that we... If we haven't talked about, we really should because there are some pretty cool auto IT scripts you can use. We use them already to build pineapples here at Hack5 because, you know, it takes a while to build them by hand. So right. it's all like, what is it, Windows key control Z and it boop, boop, boop. And Ten minutes later, boom, you know, take it out of the oven. Woohoo! <laughs> and it works. It's really creepy too because you get to see your computer doing all crazy stuff that you've programmed it to do previously. Wow. Yeah, I'm really excited. Kind of like that car that I just Ooh, well, we'll save that for later. Yes. Yes. Yes, we will. All right. Now, coming up, Shannon's going to be reviewing Jolly Cloud OS and seeing if it's jolly. But first, Christian Fernandez joins us to talk VoIP. Domain.com, they're owning the competition with cheap domain names and no hassle service. And our Hack5 fans are making Domain.com one of the fastest growing domain registrars in the world. So whether you're setting up a website to show off pictures of your cat or brag about your new boning skills or something more business related, Domain.com is the place to buy a domain for your new idea. And Domain.com offers easy checkout process, making it simple to find your domain name and set up your website with no hassle. Domain.com's domain discovery system quickly shows you the available names, making it easy to select the right extension and uh, you know you can get yourself a sweet com or even a .co and save a character. And if you already have a domain somewhere else, it's totally cool. Transfer it to Domain.com for only $7.61 and get an extra year for free. So the guys at Domain.com are such huge fans of Hack5 that they want to hook up our fans. So if you use the coupon code HAK5, you get an extra 15% off your next domain purchase or transfer. So that would be like $6.47 for a transfer. So ha, don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. A great man once said in 1986 that we make use of a service already existing without paying for what could be dirt cheap if it wasn't run by a bunch of profiteering gluttons. And well, welcome to the future where it's super cheap anyway. And to talk about that, Christian Fernandez, how are you, man? I'm good. Christian is a uh, friend here from the Bay Area that is a co-founder of Ace Monster Toys, the yep. hacker space here in Oakland. Yep. And uh, I'm also co-founder of GetCustard.com. Uh, we do uh, a thing with VoIP, which uh, I guess we're going to talk about a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I figured, you know, why not? It's, it's always great when we can get some experts in the studio to just kind of kick around fun, techie topics. And this is just one of those. As you guys know, we love VoIP. Uh, in fact, Paul here, back when he had hair, cut to the clip now, uh, back in like season three, we did a segment on uh, Asterisk, uh, awesome voice over IP open source service. And we put on like some really underpowered links as <laughs> hardware. Um, but now like so much has changed. Tell me about FreeSwitch. So FreeSwitch uh, is essentially a spin-off of Asterisk, uh, not in the traditional sense of it was uh, forked uh, from the Asterisk code base, but uh, the lead dev on Asterisk, um, Anthony Misali, I think his name was, uh, decided Asterisk is just too buggy and too unstable for production work. So he decided, hey, I'm just going to do, I'm going to take everything we learned doing Asterisk, and I'm going to build Asterisk, Asterisk version 2, and, and we'll call it Free Switch. And that came out in 2000. Uh, 2000, somewhere between 2005 and 2008. Yeah, FreeSwitch uh, claims to be the world's first cross-platform, scalable, free, multi-protocol soft switch, yes. meaning it's a PBX. It's a PBX. It lets you connect uh, a bunch of phones to a thing and then make computers do things to them. I love it when you, you send your code to their code and you make shit happen. Yeah. It's yeah. good. It's good. You can do, um, I use it personally at home to, uh, to connect to uh, my, my front door. It has a little gate, a little buzzer, and they you know just dial your phone and... Uh, um, and th that's what I use it for. I, I have it, you know, some, someone comes at the front gate, it dials, a bunch of phones ring, someone answers. Someone, yeah, we, yeah, you notice that we don't use the buzzer at the apartment building anymore. Yeah. Everybody's yeah, just everybody's like, this is a glorified <laughs> doorbell is yes. what it is. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And now it's an even more glorified doorbell. I have a 
so, heavy VPS running it. <laughs> okay, so tell me about this. Why use a voice over IP service just so that somebody could ring your doorbell? And, and what are the features that the existing service didn't have? Right. Well, uh, one of the things that I do is that I have a couple of li lines. Um, I live with my girlfriend, and she sometimes wants to answer the phone <laughs> or answer the doorbell and not wait for me to pick up the phone. So I have it ring a bunch of phones in sequence when, uh, you know, just in case someone's not there. Sure, um, hit the landline. If that fails, yeah. hit the cell phone. If that fails, hit your pager. I'm joking. Yeah, if you really want to. Um, you can do tricky things like have a, a web page where you can just click a button and it'll send the dial tone, the DTM app, and open your, you know, like you'll get alerted on a website and you can just open it remotely without Oh, okay, so it'll phone. send the tone yeah, to, yeah. to open the door. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so you can do all sorts of nonsense things. And you use FreeSwitch to do this, and why not, why not using Asterisk? Um, well, so, I mean, like I said, uh, Asterisk just uh, has a lot of problems with stability. They have, uh, so core design decisions were made way back, back, you know, in 19, no, it must have been 2000 something, um, just prevent it from being stable under heavy load. Uh, and, you know, my phone, <laughs> my front door buzzer is not exactly getting high load, but rather than deal with uh, deadlocks that I can't track down, I just thought I'd try uh, free switch out. The, the other thing is Asterisk uh, has this terrible programming language that you use to manipulate it. And, oh, the script uh, files, the script those, those asterisk conf files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I you know, love those conf little, You know, you learn to hate the little equals and the greater than sign. Um, and you know, free switch. And so, so free switch isn't based on a bunch of configuration files. No, it, it is. It's configuration GUI? files. It's 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 still the same. So you still have to be a little bit of a nerd to to, to manipulate it. But uh, they don't watch our show. <laughs> no. Anyway, but uh, it's it's XML. So you oh, know, yeah. you um, so it's a different kind of hate. But it's it's what the fun thing about this XML is that you can uh, from inside your 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 dial plan they call it. You can invoke uh, an external script like say. A so you Python can write shell script or Python or whatever your favorite language is so right. that when certain events happen on the phone system, you have this event right. happen. Right. Well, so what you can do is you take the call as it comes in. You get the session of, of the call and you can manipulate it. You can play music to it. You can play audio to it. You can collect uh, uh, keys that are being pressed in the dial pad. You can collect all the, you know, the call information where they're coming from. Um, and that by itself is like, uh, it's okay. You can transfer the call around. but but. Where it becomes interesting is now that you have the entire Python standard library behind you, uh, you can do things like a call comes in, you know, alert, uh, send off something off to a server somewhere, dip in the database, you know, do a geo lookup on the incoming call, do all sorts of nonsense. So um, would you say that FreeSwitch is more developer friendly? I, uh, it's not necessarily more developer friendly. It's more me friendly. Like, okay. Asterisk is very developer oriented. It's it's not something. That you know the typical you know home user would just like hey I'm going to set an asterisk box. Um, there's something called tricks box which lets you do that, but asterisk itself is not necessarily that. It's it is definitely geared towards developers, and a lot of people build entire APIs and, and services on top of asterisk. So it is developer friendly, but free switch is a little more sane. Well, I, I think that actually like talking about the, that home user, mm -hmm. you know that that. Like gets VoIP but doesn't necessarily want to code it their own right. or, or implement. I mean, I'm right. sure it's just like some Debian packages right. and some configurations. Right. There's probably some tutorials. Right. Can't be that hard, right? How right. hard could it be? <laughs> uh, but, well, uh, yeah. compile from source. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me break out my Gen two box. But uh, but back to the, the the home consumer. How is this different from your, or, or what would the service be? Uh, that, that you can implement different than what you could just get for like what is like five bucks a month or less uh, from um, Skype or even yeah. just like Google Voice, which is still free this year. I uh, hope they still extend the freeness <laughs> for 2012. Well, I mean, like the the, the biggest uh, the biggest benefit of this is that you're not tied to a soft phone. You know, you're not tied to your computer to get your phone calls. Um, it's changing a little bit now that uh, you know, like things can get sent to, directly to your cell phone. But I mean, for some of us, I don't like using my like I have a crappy minute plan on my cell phone, so I just uh, yep. I'd rather not waste those minutes on answering the door. Um, so for a couple of bucks, even less than you know, Skype's five bucks a month or whatever, you can get you know. Uh, this is right. So let's talk about the. I mean, uh, the SIP and and all of these like like Asterisk and Free Switch and all mm -hmm. those like voice things, uh, VoIP things. You know, competing with say Google Voice or mm -hmm. or um, or Skype. You know, we're already talking about dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. So how can we make it even more dirt cheap? I mean, how dirt cheap are we talking? Because you're you're saying that you're using like several services right. tied in to make this ridiculously cheap. So if you just want inbound dialing, like if you in this case, like if you're just setting up a phone system, then you don't you know need it to call the pizza man or whatever. You can uh, you can there's a company called IP Call with a K 
in Seattle, um, and they will give you a phone number in their whatever area code that they happen to live in, um, and they will direct all calls that come into that phone number directly to your SIP server, which means as long as you have a SIP server running, you get free inbound. To so, so you run your SIP server, probably mm -hmm. uh, free switch, you free know, switch, that's what you houses, like, yeah. on you know, your home server, you know, just some, some old laptop you got laying around, yeah. or even, you say you run it on a virtual private server? I, I run it on a VPS that was really meant for something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> a awesome. small 256 megs of RAM. Oh, uh, dude, it's, so you can run this on nothing? You can, you can run it on nothing. You can that's run wicked. it on an old laptop. Um, and so, so 